Glory be to Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one to you and God. Amen. We have come to that great season of Advent. Within a few days, we will begin the fast of the Advent in preparation to celebrate the great feast of Nativity. And today we commemorate the event of the Annunciation to the Holy Theotokos. Today we heard the Gospel reading where the angel came to Mary and having a detailed discussion about her future. And we see that Mariam was scared when the angel appeared. And we are not surprised. A teenage girl confronts an angel. And then he greets her and says that she is going to be pregnant. It could be shocking and it is surprising. Then she confronts him within her using her own knowledge base. How can this be possible? If I have to get pregnant, something else has to happen. I have to know I am a man. Only through that process I will be able to be pregnant. And angel Last week's reading, we saw that Angel was not happy when somebody questioned the message. And this week, in today's reading, we see an another approach. Angel is not angry. Angel is not planning to punish Mary for doubting the message. But he patiently shares with her the news about her cousin. Within the human knowledge framework, it is impossible for Elizabeth to be pregnant. Now you look at your own cousin, about whom people have called barren and in advanced age is pregnant and in her six months. And that sort of leads Mary to say the famous words. Here I am the handmaid of God, let it be so. So this is something we have to think repeatedly. It is not merely about an event, a commemoration of something that happened. And the passage of Mary's, and Mary's response not merely was in agreement, she responds with a great song which we use in our liturgy or the prayers every day. The famous song, Mary's song called The Magnificat, My Soul Magnifies the Lord. And when you reflect on that song, and I don't want to go into the contents, the detailed contents of the song, but imagine this is a teenage girl. And I have repeatedly shared this in several occasions, so most of you might have heard me saying it again and again, so, but I don't mind saying it again once more to you. A teenage girl comes or she is, I'm just reflecting, if one teenage girl comes to us and tells us she is pregnant from Holy Spirit, I have a message from God or the angel of God appeared to me and said, I will be pregnant and I haven't known a man. How many of us will be ready to believe that? And remember, she was living in an age and in a society where for this 
she could be stoned to death she is she is aware of that risk unlike today nobody can do anything physically no physical harm to a teenage girl for doing that at least legally they cannot do but she was living in a society where she can be killed officially legally killed and because the scriptures demand that and knowing that she agrees she surrenders to the will of god with this knowledge that she is putting her life at risk that is what i call a radical submission to the will of god because many of or none of us are willing to take a risk to obey god none of us would like to obey god but we would like god to obey us because that is what we do always god do me this god do me that take care of my children take care of my job take care of my illness do this do this do this of course we have a bargaining system we can offer something in return maybe a dollar couple of dollars or a something donated to the church but beyond that what god demands is a complete surrender that's what mary does and later in the gospel narratives we see jesus using this as an example we see when mary and his uh, brothers visit him there was crowd and when people went and told him that your mother is here to see you then he uses this who are my bro- brothers and my mother and my sister the ones who obey the will of god because he is saying that how did my mother become my mother by obeying the will of god and now mary becomes a partner in god's salve soteriological mission or the salvific effort for the whole humanity she is willingly surrendering herself to god that god can use her as the channel through which he can become incarnate again and this also is a challenge for us because when we reflect on mary we can always think about she is a great intercessor we trust in mary's intercession well and good but at the same time we are also called to be like her to be the ones who bear god become god bearers for the rest of the world are we bearers of god the word the or talk on spawn the one who born god the god bearer this is a call each and every one of us have called to be god bearers so that anybody who looks at us can say there goes a man or a woman or a child who bears god or looking at him or her i can see god that's what mary did mary became the god prayer so that the world shall be redeemed so as we end up on december 1 we will begin the service um, the ad fast for the advent so so that we prepare ourselves the great event so as we prepare for the fast let us also remember that we are called to be god bearers not merely rememberers of events this is not about a calendar where we remember something a remembrance is also a commemorate commemoration in the sense that we try to copy her try to imitate her so that our life itself will be transformed may god bless us all thank you